Hold on a second. Hold on a second. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, we're live. Okay, so hello everyone. Happy New Spring and Chinese Lunar Year of the Dragon. Welcome to join or today's Yaji. Before we start, let me quickly remind you to mute your mic if you are not a performer or speaker. Thank you. Uh,大家好,新春快乐,祝贺中国农历,呃,龙年快乐,欢迎参加我们今天的雅集. Uh,我很快速地提醒大家,如果你不是表演者或演讲者,请将麦克风关静音,谢谢. Uh, you are welcome to use the chat room to leave any comments or questions. We will also have a Q&A time to interact with our performance today. 欢迎在聊天室中留下任何评论或问题。我们今天还将有互动时间与我们的表演者进行问答交流. First, let's welcome our founding president, Mr. Yuan Zhongping from Taipei. 欢迎我们的创设社长袁中平先生。Welcome, Dong Ping. Gong Shi, Gong Shi, Gong Shi, Fatai, Shinyaha, Chen Kang Ping. So, what's up in the Soman, Songha, Guchin, Shakui, and Misuza, Sandy Ru? So, what you've been the Okay, so uh, um, I have a broken English, uh, so I ask uh, Sarah Chen and Andre uh, help me to translate a difficult Chinese, uh, uh, the tense thing, uh, with the lake. But before I'm, I'm gonna tell you this exhibition, um, I gotta say something about the Chinese Qing Society as an association uh, in uh, Taipei, Taipei Qing Dao Guan, the Taipei Qing Ho. Last year, uh, 2023 to 23rd, uh, we moved to the Yangming Mountain, Buzai Dao Yuan. So I prepared some uh, picture. So maybe let you see uh, now the Taipei Ching Ho situation. Are you with me? You you can everybody can see in this uh, screen. Yes. Okay. Now this uh, Taipei Ching Ho from Taipei City um, move up to the uh, Yangming Shan uh, Mountain. So now this uh, is located and. Uh, the same of the uh, environment. In front have a uh, um, water and back have a uh, mountain. So that in the national park, uh, Yang Min Shan. Um, so welcome to Taipei, uh, come to visit us. This is uh, inside and, uh, and the outside. Okay, so the Taipei Ching Ho the the sign is move up to there, and we have also we still have the chin chin gathering there, and we have a class there. We still teaching, and also we have an exhibition. Um, that's why today I gonna uh, share uh, my work. This Yuan Zhongping Xianshen Gu Mo Ta Ying. Um, so now I use Chinese because that's easy for me. So if someone, I ask Sarah Chen, can help me to translate. Um, why is there this exhibition? That's because I have collected some more. This more is one of the Tao Mo. We know 琴棋书画啊，张宗的书法跟绘画
他们的文房四宝是很重要的。那笔墨纸砚，除了笔以外呢，排行第二的就是墨，然后才来才是纸，最后才是砚。那么墨，我们晓得它只是一个呃 ink stick， 但是等我们接近它、了解它以后。墨不是那么简单，只是一个 color stone. For treasures of uh Chinese calligraphy, uh, we not it's not only on the brushes. Also, the ink sticks, ink cakes are uh, also plays a very important role in the four treasures. Uh. This time, uh, Master Yuan has a collection of 10 ink cakes that presents the uh, Westlake 10 sceneries that uh, uh, from these exhibitions, which uh, is with the ink rubbing works and the calligraphies together co-exhibits in the in the one artwork that's to show that the uh, paintings and the portraits which show on the uh, in case right okay 谢谢。所以我们现在先来看一下我们的墨它的照片。呃，我们西湖十景呢，顾名思义，它有十定啊墨，呃，它有各种不同的形状。它里面呢，都绘画了，呃，当这个西湖十景的风景，啊，那也立了名称。背面呢是乾隆皇帝他所去江南去逛西湖以后所提的十首诗。那么现在在荧幕上，各位可以看到的就是这个墨的样子。From the uh, screen, you can see all the paintings which show on the ink case, which you can see the 10 sceneries, which when Qing Dynasty, the Emperor Qianlong, when he visited the West Lake, you can see he also uh, leave the very nice portraits um, for all the sceneries, which these poetry he made, you can also see on the 10 in like in case. 墨它的形成有分两种一原料，一种叫油烟墨，一种叫松烟墨。那么油烟墨比较黑亮，松烟墨是绘画所比较需要它的不同层次的灰色跟黑色。那么所以呢，在一般书画家呢，他们会选择不同的墨。There are different kinds of uh, uh, ink materials. Which ink made from? Uh, one is from the oil. The other is from uh, collecting from the burning of the pine trees. Uh, from the different materials, you can see the different tones of the ink. Which, when you use it for paintings or writing calligraphies, you can see all the different tones of from the ink. 那么墨它当然是颜料，但是呢，我们在收集这些烟以后呢，它需要用胶把它们和起来，所以在墨的制作过程是一个非常繁复而专业的。首先，它收集了烟以后呢，要倒在水里，啊，过滤，啊，杂质就会沉下去，浮在水面上的，把它收藏起来，晾干要几个月，然后呢。再用胶把它要要十万处的这样打，打下来以后呢，啊、呃，然后呃，参考重量，然后压一个模子，然后倒出来晾干。那么这个胶呢，一克的墨呢，基本上要晾三个月它才会透。所以呢，我们的墨如果越大，那么它每天都要去翻。啊，要可能要翻个十克，叫三年，所以非常的不容易。哦<咳>、oh, ，so I'll try to translate this for for Mr. Yet. So 
apparently it's a really difficult process to make ink. So before making it into the cakes, so you need to collect the soot from the burning of the wood, for example. Then you need to filter it through water. So the, the dirty part will actually stay afloat on the water. So you collect it and you remove it and you continue the process. Then you need to add some sort of glue into the mixture. And for example, normally like a small stick, you need to you need to dry it, right? So normally uh, the stick would take three months to dry if it's a smaller piece. If it's a bigger cake, you need to uh, yeah. up to three years of continuous turning it upside down. So every day, the person who makes ink, he will turn the ink stick upside down to make it uh, right. Otherwise, it can transform it. It, it, it can change the form. So,第一个制作工序非常的繁复，需要的时间又非常的久。那么我们晓得现在我们每一个人手上都会呃必需品是一个手机，古代人他们每天都要写字，所以他们对墨的要求非常的高，所以呢，墨呢最早是在我们有文明
啊、哦、上供的，那个当然是选择当地最好的材料、最好的制作啊、呃、上供给皇帝的。那么第四种就是玉墨。就是皇帝在皇宫里面本身就有一个造墨的一个单位，他们专门供给给皇帝使用的。Um, so right now, every person has a cell phone, has an, a phone in their pocket. Uh, it's something we use every day. Uh, but before, with the ancient times, during the ancient times, people they won't have phones, but they would have uh ink sticks. So this is something because they need to write every day. So this is something they would have on the table with them all the time. Uh, and because this uh thing is so important to literati, this thing is so important to people of culture. Uh, there's a lot of stories involved. There's a lot of um, stories about the making of the ink stick. There's a lot of uh, stories what illustration to put on the ink stick, what design, what form. Uh, the structure, what poetry to put on the on on the on the ink itself, just to make it more interesting, not just something you know to 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 extract the color from. So there are four different types of ink stick. The first one is the uh, Wendra and more. This is basically something you just use to 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 write with something to something that produces black color, and that's it. The second type is. When so? Uh, one some more Bye. something you can um, look at it, enjoy, enjoy looking at it. You can okay. play it, play with it. You can touch it. Okay, so yeah, you, can, you can collect it as well. The third one is the uh, the type of Gong. ink, Gongping, which is um, the emperor, the officer, which uh, offer to the emperor. Yes, and the fourth uh, one, Yu Mo. 就是皇宫里面，他自己有一个单位。对，所以墨是非常讲究的一项东西。它怎么讲究呢？除了它的烟跟它的胶之外呢，呃，为了要防蠹虫去啃食它的纸张跟它的作品呢，所以呢，我们在墨里面要加一些东西，比如说冰片啊，啊，这个麝香啊，啊，这个呃。猪胆啊，啊，鸡胆啊，再加上一些黄金啊，一些珍珠啊，等等，很多中药材。它的目的除了这个香味，它其实最主要的目的是防御蠹虫会去啃食我们的作品。嗯、um, ，Normally people who produce ink they would uh put a lot of Chinese medicine and herbs inside the ink. Uh, and not because of the fragrance, because a lot of people, when they smell the ink, they, they first thing they say, oh, it smells really nice. But to prevent the bugs from eating the artwork, because this way they would just eat paper, which you can change, but they won't eat the, the ink itself. Um, 那么我们墨如果做好了，请画家画好以后，我们需要一个很厉害的一个科工。因为这等于是一个微雕，非常的精细，所以各位可以从照片上就可以看到，他必须要把绘画的这些线条要刻在一个呃很硬的木头上，但是那些线条又要跟画家所展现的这种柔细啊或者刚强啊等等，还有后面的书法也要完全吻合书家写的原来的精神面貌。所以在制作这个墨模是一个非常啊、uh, 珍贵的一件文物。Uh, there is a whole team of people, uh, skillful people involved in in the process of making. So of course there is a painter who makes the picture. There is a person who writes poetry,、uh, a calligrapher who produces the、mm -hmm. the, the the beautiful words.、Mm -hmm. But then there is also a carver who produces the the mold for for the ink. So he carves really, which is called the、uh, way 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 micro the micro 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 sculpture right、yeah. to produce the the mold for the ink. 对，那么什么样的木头可以承受这么细腻的线条？而这个木头还不会裂开，而且它的木纹还不能太粗，要不然我们只看到木纹，因为它是用很大的压力去把它压出来的。
，所以要特别找到一种叫蛇楠木才能做这个墨膜。So the only wood that can produce this special effect, which we can carve, which will not crack,、uh, is called 石楠木。石楠木。Yeah. Um. 所以呢，当我们现在手上拿着一锭墨的时候，各位要晓得，它得来之不易。然后它的从它等于说结合了绘画、书法、诗词、雕刻跟制作。所有的工艺于一体。So one ink stick in the future, when you get your hands on one ink stick, please remember that it also involves not only the process of ink making itself, but also a painter, a calligrapher, and the, the wood carver. Four people to produce one、uh, art object, which is the ink stick. 对，所以今天呢，呃，我就因为时间的关系，我来给各位展现一下这一次。作品，呃，除了这个墨之外呢，我们来看一下，有几张照片。这个是当时在清代，也就是胡开文那个时候，从呃照相机刚发展出来以后呢的一些老照片。我在我的展览上呢，呃，就就就贴在墙上。比如说，我们按照西湖十景的顺序啊。第一个呢，这个是呃苏堤春晓的照片，是当年这个西湖的景象。The dog on the Sioux Causeway in spring. So the ink stakes they feature ten sceneries of Westlake, and those photos、uh, were developed right when the photographer was uh, uh, how should I say it?、Um, Was introduced to the world during the Qing Dynasty, so this was like one of the earliest pictures produced of the West Lake. 第二个景致呢是曲院风荷 Wine making yard and lotus palm in the summertime. 第三个景致呢在墨上面也做的是平湖秋月 Moon over the peaceful lake in autumn. 第四个景色呢是断桥残雪。Red mountain on the bridge in winter。啊，第五个景致，花岗观鱼。Fish viewing at the flower pond。第六个景致，柳浪闻莺。Orioles singing in the willows。第七个景致，三潭映月。Moon and candlelight mirrored in the lake. 再来就是双峰插云 Two peaks piercing into the clouds. 第九个雷峰夕照 Yeah, the Leifeng Pagoda in the sunset. 第十个景是南屏晚钟 Evening bell ringing at the Nanping Hill. Okay. 那么，所以呢，在这十个景呢，我就我收藏的墨，我办了一个袁中平先生西湖十景古墨拓印书法展。那么，我出版了这一本画册啊。那其中呢，就邀请了坐在我旁边的陈丽如，因为他是拓印专家。所以呢，这个东西这边拓印呢，就是把一个宣纸摆在这个墨的上面，然后用墨来拓墨。So those ten photos we we just saw just now, there are actually ten places those Xihu Shuting ten places from the Westlake, which are on the ink sticks, and we produced this not only the artwork but we also made this little booklet here. Uh, and Teacher Yuan, he invited Chen Liru, who helped him to make the rubbings. So they actually did the rubbings of the ink stick. And ah, this is what I say. Book book in front of the sentence just shows that the ink and the paint are related. Ah, preface the teacher wrote himself, and this is the artwork with the rubbing. And with the European. Then, in this book, there is my work. 
我写上的诗在这啊，这个我诗呢是用明朝张岱他的《西湖寻梦》这本书里面他所提的这个十首关于这个呃西湖的诗，每一个景色啊。那所谓的这个西湖十景，是从宋代才开始有这件事情的，也就是在宋以前啊，这个西湖并没有成为一个景致。那么我们知道，苏东坡当时到了西湖当官，造了书题啊，所以后面渐渐的才有这十景。那么这就是呃，我这一次所创作的这个作品啊。啊，我写的书法，然后请陈丽如女士踏的墨，啊，那你来讲讲这个踏墨还是，来 ，please translate。嗯、uh, ，I use very、uh, thin piece of paper and I use the ink wax because normally we rubbing、uh, the calligraphy、uh, on the stones. But now, because you have to rub in the inks, the ink case, I cannot use uh, uh, water and uh, ink. So I have to use the uh, ink wax. So I use ink wax rubbing on the piece of paper and making all the paintings on the ink case uh, on the, the artwork. Yeah. 好，那我们现在呃看一下当时展览的状态。啊，那么就在我们不再道院啊所展览的现场的照片啊，这就是我们所展示的方式啊。那么很高兴的就是，我们展完以后，呃，一看一下子，第一天就完全被一位收藏家全部给收藏了。那么后来呢，另外一位收藏家因为呃他也抢不到啊，他又定制了，又订了第二套。啊、um, ，所以这个非常的高兴啊，因为呃，我们这个第一次把墨这样子来做啊，那得到大家的欢迎。那我们现在把镜头看一下这一件这一件作品，就是墨的本身啊。然后我在旁边呢有写一下它的名称。好，那么以上呢，还有没有补充的？就是我对这个展览跟各位的报告。那么，因为今天是过新年，那么今年是龙年嘛，我在这边顺便准备了呃几锭这个关于有关龙的墨啊，是现场呢可以跟大家分享。这个是天府永藏啊、呃，这像是一个印章。但它的四边呐、啊、都是龙纹，上面也是龙啊，所以呢，为了今年是龙年，我就把我收藏的一些龙啊啊拿出来给大家看。那还有一种是龙的臂啊，这上面这都是墨啊，旁边有有有文字，这个是啊天启元年啊，就是明代吴开文所做的，然后再来是。Uh, a few more of his own private collection, the ink stones from the previous one was from Ming,、uh, from the Ming Dynasty, and they all、uh, featuring a long、uh, a dragon pattern on them because it's the、uh, the New Year of the Dragon. 对，这是五条龙，五黎陈君房造，就是陈君房。So this was made by Chen Junfang. 啊，还有，这个也是，这是九龙九凤。这边有九条龙，然后这边有九条凤。This one is featuring nine phoenixes and nine dragons. 对，这个是方雨鲁，也是明代，呃，这个做墨的。然后还有刚刚陈君航、方雨鲁都是明代的大家。还有一个最少见的明代大家就是罗小华，他做的龙。Quite a rare one from the Ming Dynasty as well, from the 罗小华。对，它在海上，然后基本上是两条龙，这边叫松华。好，那再来一个就是玉墨，就是皇帝的
皇宫里面所造的墨，这个是一条龙，龙形。From the collection of the emperor. 对，啊。From made in the palace. 对 ，made in the palace。好，都有了吗？那么这些都是有关于这个龙年，所以我想带给大家祝福各位新年快乐。最后一定墨呢，那是跟我们古琴有关的，古琴墨。So just now, before that, you saw the dragon-related ink stones, ink uh, ink sticks, and this one is something connected to us, the Guqing players. It's a ink stick. 造这个墨的也姓袁啊，袁在轩。Made into the Guqing shape. Yeah. And the person who made this ink apparently is also his surname is Yuan as well. 好，那么今天我关于墨的讲话就到这里，谢谢。This is all about it. 如果有什么问题，可以现在发问。之前有一个那个 Danny 问说，用什么材料当胶？对，一个是鹿胶，跟一个是鱼胶。一个鹿鹿胶，鹿胶，嗯，啊，对，或者是鱼皮胶啊。鱼皮。Deer skin。还有一种烟是漆烟，就是我们做琴的那个大漆啊。大漆烧出来的烟，那个会发亮。我我这边也有一些玉墨，那就是因为我有收藏，哈、啊、一些各类的我都有，所以我今天只是拿有关于龙的给大家看一下。那个漆漆墨，一会有机会再给各位看。Another type of soup which is collected is not only from burning oil or wood, but also from burning the the lacquer. Like the lacquer we use on the Guqing, also burned, collected, and produced into ink. 对，还有没有什么其他的问题？老师，袁老师，那这些墨是只是做 collection 而不使用 ，right？ 呃，不舍得使用，但是它可以用，而且我也用了啊、呃，因为人生短暂，我赶快把一个明代的这个。方玉鲁的墨我来磨，所以我这边有砚台。如果你们想看我磨明代的墨，我现在可以磨给你们看呀。因为我们在讲究的是它的墨色，因为我们写字，我们很讲究就是它这个，呃，一个砚台发不发墨，然后墨的颜色，它的灰色调到黑色调，它是偏紫色呢，还是偏一些呃绿色呢，还是偏红色，还是偏咖啡这些。呃，在不同的墨里面，其实它是有色调的。OK， 我们看一下，你已经墨好了。哦，没没没有，呃，要要磨才行。要磨。So I was asking Master Yuan, the、uh, is it those very valuable ink? Do you use it or you just collect it? And he says some you can use it because life is too short, and um. 所以要用。Yeah, so you have to use it. Yeah, 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 you have to use it. 一百很多了，啊，所以满满一柜。So Master Yuan has almost collect more than a hundred ink stick, right? 像这样就十个了，就很容易。我讲的是像这样算是一件作品。嗯，哦 ，OK。所以展出来很重要，让让我们看。呃，对对，所以跟大家分享。那呃，如果没有问题的话。我可以弹一首曲子，如果大家还有时间的话。那为什么要弹这首曲子？因为这是我自己呃创造的古琴的指法，但是我用的姜夔的旋律，呃，叫《利希梅令》。那为什么要弹《利希梅令》？因为姜夔写的这个文章，它的内容就是讲西湖啊，所以呢，我们看了这个西湖的这个墨呢，还有照片呢，我们听一下。关于西湖的古琴啊，这就是姜夔的《利希梅令》，他是他的诗啊，然后讲的就是他当年
跟女朋友在逛西湖，但是如今呢，人都不在了，然后只剩下这个景景色啊。那他的歌词是这样子：好花不与替乡人，浪淋淋，又恐春风归去，绿成荫，玉殿何处寻？木兰双桨，梦中云，小横尘，漫向孤山山下，密盈盈，翠青及一村。So、uh, this good thing piece, the, which Master Yan will perform today, is also collected connected to the Hanzhou and to the Westlake. This is、uh, the piece is called Telisi Mai Ling, and this is、um, the good thing piece which he、um, composed by himself. And the poetry was made by by Jiang Kui, and、uh, um, he wrote about his feelings, how he and his girlfriend was strolling around West Lake, and at the end he say he sings,、um, even though the person is no longer with me, but I can still enjoy the beautiful scenery. So, must be able to perform. Okay, 我来移动一下位置，请大家欣赏指教。这个琴的 tuning 是景五慢三。A reminder to turn on original sound, otherwise it might be blocked off. 可以吗？ Still not so good. Still not so good. 接触不了。嗯、好，那现在开始演奏《利希梅令》。
山山下。谢谢。好，我的节目就到这里结束。非常感谢，谢谢。马老师，感谢马局老好。小方虎，方虎。啊，对，来，有什么要跟我说的吗？哦，没想到你，阿莫，对对对，到这个程度。啊、<笑>哦。<笑>对，我还有很多墨，我可以如果想看，可以再拿一两个来欣赏。哎，不过我想把时间留给其他人吧。嗯，呃，我发问之前还是应该先呃，袁老师那边，但是呃，静音一下么？因为这样回音好像很大。嗯，好来，先静音来。OK， 听不听到吗？ OK， 好，呃、uh, ，袁老师 ，Sorry， I'm gonna start、uh, in English first and then ask again Chinese. 之后采用普通话问吗？呃，老师 ，OK， 呃、uh, ，When you started to adapt the Li Xi Mei Ling into the Gu Qin, and you used a non-standard tuning in order to get yourself a uh, uh, heptatonic or emulating a heptatonic scale, um, what kind of considerations do you have? In order to、uh, choose which kind of chin timbre, so open string, press string,、uh, harmonic, in order to fit into the pitch, which is usually written well,、uh, just for otherwise like xiao or di,、uh, which only indicates the pitch and not the timbre. How do you、uh, mix them up so that it sounds like a chin melody? Uh, 用回中文问多一次吧。呃，就是在呃打谱这个利息没令的时候呢，呃，你是用了一个外调来模仿那个六声音阶或者甚至是七声音阶，呃，这个是七弦琴的理所当然的事啦。呃，不过就是呃，你怎么决定什么时候用散、泛、安这些音来呃，让它变成一个？呃，在古琴上是一个正常、听起来正常的一首曲子呢。OK， 可以 unmute。呃、uh, ，我觉得，就是我在做这个曲子的时候，我是先把姜夔的他所他所编的这个旋律，先把它搞出来以后，然后再用古琴它的。正调以后呢，然后去找出它的这个 mode 啊，也就是它的这个，嗯，应该有哪几个主音跟次次主音啊？所以呢，我发现到，呃，我是景五慢三这样子的这个散音呢、泛音呢，它可以完全符合姜夔在做这个曲子的这个它的。这个主从的音，然后接着呢，我再来寻找这个旋律所使用的指法。那么我们知道作曲这件事情哈、啊、是非常个人的，我没有办法在这里告诉你啊、呃、用什么样子的方式，但是你听起来它是有一套规则的。这种规则也不外乎我们传统古琴曲一开始呢。由呃慢而进而入，通常都是泛音起，啊，我先讲到这里，请翻译一下，可能呃接着我再讲，要不然太多了会忘记
Um, so once Matthew and he established first the gentle first, and then because uh, composing a piece is very personal project, right? So he tried to find a tune which is in his mind most suits the Tian Kui's uh, atmosphere, the Tian Kui's poems feeling. So which in his case was the uh, Ting Wan San. So like that. Yeah. Okay. 寻找合适的指法所以我中间自己创造了一段 solo 就是独奏 呃, 就好像, 呃, 我们西方音乐的一种状态, 而这里面我还有对位法, so because uh, for us because we play the traditional pieces there are certain rules uh, which you probably noticed were used in these pieces as well so you start with harmonics you end with harmonics for example you you start with fine yin, you end with fine yin. Um, and because there's like the, like the whole basically the whole piece is singing, so uh, in the middle there, Master Yuan he put in the solo like we have in the Western music. So he put this piece uh, in the middle. There's a point where there's no singing, right? So there's this little solo piece, which he also. Hayo uh, There are chords, yeah, and there's a hushu. 所以各位可以听到基本上我弹的是很古的中国传统的旋律但是我用的指法又是很西方的一种和弦跟对位还有爬音这种东西所以基本上这种东西就是一个我个人的刚刚回答你怎么样创作这是一个很私人的就是我所能够使用的知识跟感觉把它编写出来那么当泛音跟散音在它是需要对比所以呢我在两次同样一个旋律的时候的句子我会一个用散音第二次出现的时候我会用泛音然后呢最后呢要做一个 那么中间的节奏跟快慢，还有乐句的呃搭配啊，那这就是我们套句俗话叫功力啊，就是你有没有具备这样子的能力，然后当你有具备这样能力，你就创造出一个代表你个人的一种表现，那这就是这一首曲
she is going to per, uh, I'm, I'm going to share her performance on the flowing water liu shui and then a partial of a uh, pei lan from a uh, silk string qing performance so uh before i play let let's let the yuan laoshi yuan xi laoshi talk something for us yuan yuan xi laoshi ni ke yi xian shuo yi liang ju hua gen da jia wen hou yi xia ma yi da jia xin nian hao hen gao xing zai zhe ge shi jian gen da jia xiang qu zai wang luo chong ren shi da jia hen gao xing e na ma wo ge da jia dai lai de qu zi zhe shi zhong guo zui chuan tong de shi da gu qu zhi yi de liu shui ran hou ling wai yi shou qu zi ne shi yi ge um 四川川派的一个代表曲叫做《佩兰》，然后因为《佩兰》呢，它的时长比较长，然后我们就节选了前面几段，嗯，分享给大家。好，我们先听一下曲子。那呃，你的翻译要不要帮你翻译一下？翻译成英文。刚刚你嗯，需要翻译来翻译。哦<笑>、oh, ，OK， 呃、uh,。印尼，你在吗？在，我在。来，麻烦。Just letting you know, I'm right here. o、oh, k、okay. mm-hmm. 那就对，就是印尼白，还是印尼？嗯，呃，第一次由我来开始吧，因为毕竟他说了佩兰。好、oh.。Okay, so now we have a Miss Yuan, a Yuan Xi, with us right now. Uh, she will be playing two pieces. One is Liu Shui, Flowing Water, which is a very well-known piece already. Uh, needs no further explanation. But the other piece she'll, she'll be playing, or half the piece that she'll be playing because of uh, time constraints, will be our um, Pei Lan, or Wearing Orchid, which is a signature piece of the Sichuan school, my school. Okay, very good. So now I'm going to share my screen for first piece, Liu Shui, Flowing Water. So let me try sharing. Okay. Now let's listen. Oh. 
Okay, so can everybody hear that okay? Okay, so I'm, yes. Okay, so I'm going to share the second piece, which is 
Oh, uh, who, who's playing? <laughs> Anyway, okay, so I'm going to share the second piece, uh, which I hear some music. Who's playing? Oh, I see, I see. My, my computer is playing. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to share another piece. Let me stop that one. This one. Sorry. So next one is the Pei Lan. Uh, which Yun um, Lao will play on silk string. So let me share the screen one more time. You mean to say the first piece was not played on silk strings? Liu Shui. Right, Liu Shui was a uh, metal nylon string. And this is Pei Lan. It's a uh, just need a little bit louder for your speaker if you you need to turn on the volume because this is a little soft. Oops, sorry, this happened. <laughs> Let's start again. That's it for the pay line. Okay, so if you have any question to for Yun Lao Shi, Yun Xi Lao Shi, welcome to 
ask her If, uh, Theo, instead of our asking questions, can she tell us a bit more about the piece and why she is only playing half? Uh, right, because this song is very long. She said, "Due to the time constraint, so she only plays a part." Ah, Yu Yu Xin teacher, can you tell us about Pei Lan's piece? Um, okay, okay. Ah, Pei Lan's piece, the piece is now in Sichuan. It is named as a piece. 就是嗯，演奏级别的曲子，就是我们有一个考级的标准，从一级到十级。但是呢，为了嗯，它因为这首曲子的长度很长，然后难度很大，所以就作为一个保护性的曲目，所以在四川的考级中就被定为十级以上的一个表演级的一个必考曲目。然后，嗯，你先要不要先翻译一下 ？Well, I didn't actually know that. Uh, apparently, the uh, Peilan uh, piece is uh, rendered by the Sichuan Conservatory of Music as a level 10 examiner, uh, examination piece, different from the central examination, which I believe is only level 8. If I don't remember, the Chinese Music Academy is 8th level. Yes, it's about the same. But because it's a level 10 examination, Because it's a level 10 examination, it's a level 10 examination. 然后把它想要保存下去，所以在这个非物质文化遗产的这个传承班里面，它也作为一个传承曲目来保存，就是推广，更加的嗯让更多的情人来演奏它。Okay, so uh, because this is considered a signature piece of the Sichuan School, my school, therefore uh, it is put on the highest level. Uh, in order to uh, preserve it, as the intention goes, uh, as a traditional piece uh, to be uh, held as heirloom to future students in the area. Uh, 其实他那个时候没有派别的分别就是唐代的时候就是蜀山造纸然后就是无声无声纸的就现在江南地区的这种情风它是比较温婉的其实我的启蒙是从蜀派启蒙但是到后面的跟的几位老师都是虞山派的
，还会还会再发展。嗯。Okay, recap. So、uh, first of all, we must understand that the Sichuan School, as we understand it, is a fairly recent、uh, creation. Keeping in mind that、uh, Zhang Kongshan originally is a Taoist priest coming from around Jiangxi, China,、uh, and traditionally speaking, he was trained as a、uh, Zhe School player. However, because of the Taiping Rebellion or the Taiping Uprising, he、uh, later took refuge and、uh, stayed in Sichuan, thereby founding the Sichuan School. So, as、uh, this piece, Pei Lan, originally is a Zhe Pai School、uh, piece, but then、uh, it became a signature piece of the Sichuan School because of this transmission. So,、uh, the idea that We have this、uh, regional differences or regional characters. A lot of times, we're describing the、uh, Qin situation from the seventeenth,、uh, eighteenth, and nineteenth centuries.、Uh, before that, all of these schools were actually unified during the、uh, Tang and Song because there were no Qin schools, or at least、uh, most of the players were so dominated by the scholar literati class of the medieval period that、um, there was only pretty much one school. That of the、uh, Jiangnan and、uh, Zhejiang area school. That's why all the modern schools can trace back their lineage to basically that.、Uh, on the other hand, because we have recordings first in text, later in audio recordings, and of course now in digital recordings, we can see the、uh, regional differences or.、Uh, Uh, also filtered through the interpretation of the generational masters of the early to mid twentieth century, that we have discovered and、uh, preserved such a strong impression of regionalism. However, due to the advancements of information technology, we are now talking about、uh, the coming together again, or the unification, intentional unification. Of different playing styles again, because of the proliferation of、uh, different masters' recordings and the standardization of performance through examination systems, as well as masters' performance exemplars. Well, you didn't translate about the 指头手指的角度跟颗粒感 Did I miss that? Yeah. Okay, I might I might have、uh, skipped that. If you want to cover that. <笑> Please, what? Well, yeah. Yu 老师说，就是川派，他觉得好像就是手指的角度跟就是弹出来的颗粒感比较明显，是不是？对。Okay, speaking as a、uh, 川派 student myself, um, uh, what Yuan Xi uh is saying is that uh the differences in terms of style comes from the、uh, differences in how we teach our fingerings in terms of、uh, what is considered standard strength approach or angle of attack and so forth.、Uh, ultimately, I find this to be、uh, well、uh, up to interpretation because、uh, we do indeed have differences in terms of stylistic approach, but、uh, the way of or how strict. Uh, conformity of the、uh, hand positions and formations is、uh, different due to the teacher or perhaps the textbook. However, the text what the textbooks portray are pretty much all the same. How、uh, people interpret the、uh, approach of attack or the amount of strength that is used、uh, that is considered sensible, however, is very much up to the interpretation of the teacher. Which is then transmitted to the students, and that is perceived, at least according to the school's theory, the defining traits of the differences of the schools.、Um, the very fact that this piece, she started out by saying that this was、uh, a long piece, and therefore at the top level, the very fact that it was a, a piece used for examination <laughs> already sets up a different system. Um, than one that most of us are accustomed to. That is, we do not take、uh, Gu Qin to to take an exam. We <laughs> we learn we we practice the instrument in order to find out what the music is like.
And that well, that's the thing, Marilyn. Uh, what she is expressing is a very modern phenomenon. Well, Standardized I mean, question like examinations didn't exist until 2006. So she's explaining in a very contemporary style. Of course, the piece existed far before that. Um, but I'm then the Central Conservatory really considers it level seven. The Sichuan School co uh, considers it as level 10. But uh, the piece has existed for, what, four centuries? Maybe more. I just wanted to point that out at the beginning. I'm... <laughs> <laughs> so uh, whatever the uh, level it may be, ultimately um, our impression of it today is that this is a large piece, it is a pretty long piece, it is a technically demanding piece coming from someone who also plays it, uh, and it's a defining piece of uh, pretty much the Sichuan school nowadays. Uh, perhaps a little bit less. We stole our thun we stole a thunder off of the Zhe school. I have yet to see a modern Zhe school person use this as their signature piece, but yes. Uh Yuan Xia. Just to let you know, uh Yin Wei Zheng Chen Wei Lao Shi uh其实不少在西方这边的人都是川派的学徒 Another thing about uh, the differences or discerning the different stylistics of which school came from comes from how we uh, split our sentences in the music. Uh, as you know, the Wu Qin tablatures do not really suggest a really strong idea of where a sentence uh, starts or ends. Therefore, it is uh, open to some interpretation. And uh, without the proliferation of modern uh, musical recordings, the only way to get that is through the transmission of a teacher. Therefore, uh, the whole talk about uh, determining which school you got from, also you can get the uh, hints from which uh, patterning or which uh, sentence phrasing of the pieces you can get uh, in your own playing. You can see your genealogy from there. Or that is uh, what uh, Ms. Yuan is suggesting right now. You also mentioned about local dial dialect accent can infect the phrasing. Well, yes, uh, if you talk about the uh, uh, stylistic of Zhang Kongshan's lineage, uh, you're talking about especially how when uh, Zhang first arrived in Dujiang Yan and noticed the uh, way how the water is uh, manually controlled, uh, the releasing of the uh, floodlocks of the uh, Dujiang Yan dam, the dam, uh, that uh, burst of water that he sees from the releasing of the dam led to the artistic inspiration of Liu Shui uh, as we know it today with the uh, 72 Guan Fu and finally that permeated to the other pieces uh, it is the at least that is the cover story of why uh, Sichuan school players uh, play so directly and enunciate our vowels so strongly with uh, open strings and the first bit of attack with uh, the pressed notes. Yeah,有人举手发问。林老师,我想问一下,关于那个方言是怎样影响到那个曲风的?可以在那里解释一下吗? 比如说我们四川话它的就是比如说你用这个苏州话他们讲话的方式是非常温柔的那我们四川这边的话的话它的发音它的语言方式它就会给人一种稍微会语气比较重明白吗就是这样讲能不能理解它的比如说对于一个
词的表现。那语嗯，那能气听比较听重，它是是怎样在那个呃古琴上展示出来？是那个嗯 ，attack 它是吗一个整体，它是我认为哈，它是一种整体的表现。嗯，因为它不是说哪一个音可能会重，是整个就是在处理就这个乐曲的贯穿的这个过程中，它的这个音色，它可能不会像嗯。我个人感觉哈，他可能不会像江南那一代的这种温婉的东西更多一点，他可能表现的更更直白一点。我的感觉是这样。这个我们可不可以请一宁翻译一下？对，我认为他表现的更直白一些。对，因为我觉得一宁对这个问题会比较了解一点。Yeah, uh, this, uh, so um. Miss、uh, Yuan Xi, she's talking about、uh, the style that it comes from, speech and its、uh, entire、uh, multifaceted、uh, dimension that affects the style. It's not like just the speech inflections, but it's um, it's it includes like the、uh, local like um, local customs, the entire、uh, mindset, and、uh, the entire.、Uh, Re, you know the the quirks of the region. All of that goes into forming a distinct regional style.、Um, and this is, I'll talk more about this when I'm presenting too, because recently I've been working on um, I've been working on Zhucheng pieces from Shandong, and in a,、uh, in addition to my trips in Shandong, I really do feel like you know when you see the pieces from that era,、uh, from that region, and you connect it with the people. From that region, the way they talk, the things they eat,、uh, their traditions and their customs—you know—you get a more complete picture, and then you, you can you can kind of like trace. You can see, oh yeah, yeah, that does that does sound like you know, that does sound like the people there. Like it's a it's a feeling. It's not something that's really quantifiable. It's something that just like you know, it's it's a feeling. It's a feeling. Yeah, it's like.、Uh, I think like the food analogy is like the best analogy for like Asian music because like when you go when you eat like Sichuan cuisine like you'll know, and I think like real like、uh, Sichuan of、uh, Asian pieces when you listen to it like you'll know, like it it has that distinct um, it has that distinct uh Chunpai style. I'm not sure if I'm correct in saying this, but when I listen to Chun Chun style pieces like. There's a little bit of like Sichuan flair going on, and I, I think that that relates to like their、uh, that relates to their customs, that relates to their uh, uh, you know because like Sichuan people they're very la la laissez faire, right?、Um, right. I'll, I'll end with that there. That's that. Okay. Uh, by the way, 那个刚刚发言的金宁哦。Yeah, can you introduce yourself? 就是你可不可以介绍一下你自己？啊，大家好，我是我在芬兰呃读作曲系，然后刚开始学古琴。哦、oh, ，OK。啊 ，I I I'm studying Finland, a major in composition. 啊、uh, ，and I started 古琴 recently. You're very welcome. <laughs> Thank you. 你怎么知道这个活动的 ？How did you know us?、Oh. 呃，因为之前遇到 Andre， 在呃那个伦敦那里。Hey yo,、uh, oh. he was in London conference. Oh, okay, okay. We talked a lot there. <laughs> yes, I. You must remember the lot of us. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> People ought to introduce themselves so we know who they are. It, it seems that it's easier to describe Sichuan cuisine than it is to describe Sichuan. Guqin playing style. <laughs> If I may just. Yeah, because I mean, music is much more ineffable. Like with the、uh, cuisine, you can like break it down into a、uh, actual、um, objective ingredient. Yes.、Right? But I think like with Guqin music, you have ingredients too, right? You have like the way that you chu、uh, yin, right? The the way that you uh, uh, attack the notes, the way that you.、Um, Uh, 韵调 like the way that you, uh, 
add um, ornamentation, right, with your left hand. All of that goes in. And then also the way that uh, you deal with gizzle, the way that you deal with um, rhythm, right, yes. that, that ebb and flow. All of these are ingredients, so to speak. Yeah. 这个我可能想问袁熙老师 啊，这样我就呃，比如说我我学一下成都话哈，就因为重庆话的口音还会更重一点。成都话嗯，说你在做什么啊，可以听一下。嗯，你要干啥子？Okay, <笑> that's that means what are you doing in Sichuan dialect? Can you say? 就是可以再说一次嘛，就刚刚那个那句。可以。你在干啥子？Okay，那用。用比如说浙江话，嗯，呃，或者我用普通话温柔一点说，因为苏州话说不来。嗯，你在做什么呀？ Right. So that's a standard like Mandarin way to say the same phrase. What are you doing? So maybe we can kind of get the sense of the difference. Da 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 da. Right. The difference. It's different. It's not only the rhythm, it's entirely different set of consonants are used, uh, Peyo. <laughs> <laughs> I think the rhythm is... <音><音><音><音><音><音><音> 他那边会很轻柔 然后他的初音感觉，他的气息是很细腻的。嗯嗯。Okay，就是这个谁能翻译一下？I <笑> guess, uh, I guess you can sense two different kinds of dialogue. They, they, the way they pronounce, like the shape of their teeth, they, the lips create different kind of. The air comes out from the lips, same as the music, like in the Wu. Area, Jiang, Jiangsu, Zhejiang province area. The the ending tone is a little softer and then continue going. But in Sichuan, it's very precise. Da 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 da, da 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 da. Kind of every single note is strength is the strength. So that's that's my expo explanation for Yuan Lao Su's meaning. So, uh, I think we. Thank you very much for 非常感谢袁熙老师, Oh, can I ask one more question? Oh, yeah, sorry, sorry. Steve Wong. I just wanted to ask one question. Hey, is this a Chan-Pai or Chan-Pai, Shu-Pai? So I wanted to ask because I'd always had this uh, wondering like this question so what's the difference between the shu school the chuan school and then there's also a fan chuan school are they just mm. different names or do they actually refer to different languages <laughs> Mingwan 
，都有可能就比如说现在的从四川，嗯、呃，传出就是秦人，他古代他也有从四川出去到省外的这种，那么他有一定的这个，嗯、呃，他的这个传承，他的流流传到比如说到云南，或者是到嗯、呃、湖北，那么他会有这种统称为泛传。它是指的一个有传承的、有异域性的一个东西，但是呢，因为有其他省外的流派，它肯定是主导的，所以这个泛川它目前是这种情况。然后川派的话，我觉得现在就是近期，就是我们这一代年轻人在学习、学学习的人越来越多的情况下，现在我们这一代才开始说是川派，但是正常的情况下，我认为如果要。很传统的去讲他的流这个流派的传承，就应该是蜀派啊。这个我也听别人议论过这个，讨论过这个问题。然后我现在就是，如果说嗯，对于川派或者是蜀派的话，我觉得如果用更更传统一点、更准确一点，我觉得四川应该还是蜀派。I'll give my two cents as well. 蜀派 and 川派 refer to the same school. However, the Fan Chuan Pai is a different school. The Fan Chuan Pai school、uh, later went to Shanghai, and then、uh, the one of the biggest representations of Fan Chuan school today is actually in Hong Kong, namely <laughs> that of、uh, Madame Cha Tu Yun and her、uh, descendants, disciples. Right. It's a totally different thing from the actual Chuan school and. When you're talking about the、uh, Shu or Chuan school, you're talking about、uh, Zhang Hongshan's lineage and onward. So speak nothing of the ones from before that. Oh, please, thank you. Okay, I I I have a question for uh uh uh. I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I I 啊，呃，广陵派的那个龙香操，其实听起来我就感觉非常的不一样。但是我觉得那个川派的那个秋水就非常道家，那个感觉就更加浓厚。我我不知道你你你对这个曲子有什么啊、呃，可以给我们讲解一下它的这个。嗯，因因为我主要传，因为我的学习的曲目主要是虞山派的乐曲，然后秋水的话，我前段时间是弹过一下，然后这个龙翔操和秋水，它实际上那个曲调是差不多的，然后嗯，秋水好像就是龙翔操加了另外一个弦弦弦山有嗯。行，嗯，那个还有啊，突然忘记另外一个小曲子的名字，它是两首乐曲组合在一起的。然后秋水它表现了那种平衡的东西。然后就是现在，嗯，好像这首曲子在嗯国内国外都挺火的。但是龙翔操的话，因为我也没有弹过，但是就是说他的那个风格，他的散板更多一点。然后秋水的话，他的节奏性他更稳定一点。所以我觉得大家在在选择这两首乐曲的时候，可能就会更多的可能是选择秋水，而龙翔操的话，嗯，我觉得作为一个情人来讲的话，它的难度就是这种散板的难度，它的那种意境还是很难去抓取的。嗯、然后我自己没有弹过，啊、对。哦，我以前在网上看过一个那个图，是研究秋水。他这个整个所有呃，跟他想用同一个谱子的琴曲，然后追溯到最前面是《神话引》这个曲子，我记得好像是这样。So the original,、mm -hmm. uh, uh, well, because I checked online the previous one about this、uh, piece, uh, 秋水 and actually that there's a quite a quite a tons of、um, Qin songs which shares the same melody, and、uh, the the very original source is actually 神话神话引。That's what I remember. Then, 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 then,
这个道家水的这种上善若水啊，然后去嗯感知这个世界，它应该还是跟道趣有关系。我感觉，就是还是以道家的思想为主的一些乐曲，所以会有一些感觉很平和的东西。Mm. For all intents and purposes, the、uh, piece Long Xiang Chao and the piece Qiu Shui should be treated as separate pieces because the aims of the piece have already changed.、Uh, although, of course, we are talking a piece that has so obvious uh, uh, common origins that the content of the piece, the score itself, is more than eighty percent similar. But the way how it's played is different. Uh, namely, in from section seven to around nine or so, so in the Zhuan section of the piece, uh, the Qiu Shui version includes a lot, uh, breaks it down and、uh, enunciates each uh right hand pluck, uh, much more in a in a much more defined manner than the、uh, Long Xiang Chao version, which sort of uh blah, 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 and uh mixes it up and. Pushes it through, so in a way, Tiu Shui lengthens the piece in its performance by basically emphasizing each、uh, major note and giving it、uh, its own spin, rather than quickly、uh, pushing it through with the older versions. That's a very gen generic way of、uh, determining if you're listening to Tiu Shui or Long Xian Chao.、Mm. Hi guys. Oh, by the way, John, John Thompson. Anyone?、Oh. Uh, didn't you?、Uh, didn't John write anything about、uh, the versions? Yes, but I can't remember off the top of my head. <laughs> but I don't. I don't. I don't know when you're talking about those、uh, different versions. Whether you're talking about、uh, actual recordings you've listened to, or from listening, looking at the Qin Pu, or, or what? Yeah.、Uh, comparing like the. Textual transmission and, of course, a modern、uh, reception of the Sichuan school Qiu Shui versus the、uh, Zhe school、uh, Long Xiang Chao. Scores,、uh, speaking by the score, it's more than eighty percent similar, but the way how it's played is totally different. And I can attest to this because I am a Sichuan school student and I do play Qiu Shui, so. I, for、yeah. one, cannot play. I cannot use my skill that I learned from playing Qiu Shui to play Long Xiang Chao. That's one thing. Hi guys,、uh, we need to move forward <laughs> to the next play, playing the the third player of tonight, or morning afternoon. I don't know. <laughs> so the the next one, yeah, one. Can you introduce yourself a little bit, just a little bit, and okay. Uh, okay. Uh, hello, everyone. This is、uh, Wang Gong, and uh, okay. Uh, uh, so I recorded this Huo、uh, Lin Chao and、uh, using the Su Xian Silk strings. So、um, yeah, today I just recorded it and、uh, uploaded to Billy Billy, and、uh, there's the link. And I sent the link to、um, Pale. Yeah, so Pale can play that. Huo Lin. 哦，对哈，我我得帮你播放。嗯，哎、uh, ，Yeah， before I place， let me thanks， 呃，袁熙老师，呃、uh, ，we， 嗯，就是很高兴今天能在这里见到你，让你带动整个讨论的气氛，非常热烈，非常谢谢你。那因为我们时间的关系，所以我们现在要进行到下一个节目。好的，好的。嗯，谢谢袁老师。OK， 呃、uh, ，祝你新年快乐。<笑>好，新年快乐。嗯，拜拜。呃、uh, ，那个下一位是 next one is 王根 ，right？ And I'm going to， 我就是我要跟那个像袁启老师一样，我要播放王根的视频。I need to share my screen to play 王根 s music. Um. Yeah， 今天中午录的 ，so so I recorded this noon. So. Hold on. Okay. 
Glenn, can you just introduce this piece first? Uh, okay. So. Okay, okay please. Uh, uh, so what I just want to say about this piece is that in this piece, I think it is not inherited from the, the ancient time, which means that this piece is only uh, reconstructed from uh, the old tablature by uh, Guan Ping Hu. And I think there's only Guan Ping Hu who did this reconstruction. And, uh, well, he had this recording, so I kind of studied this piece from the recording of Guan Ping Hu's recording. Huan is basically about the story of the uh, Lian, the Chinese version, someone says is Chinese version of the unicorn. And uh, okay, there's this Luai Gong. Um, well, I forgot about the year, uh, but basically the story is about, um, okay, Luai Gong and uh, uh, he went hunting. And in the forests, he saw those, uh, he saw those, uh, he saw one unicorn. And, and unicorn is uh, and this lin and this lin. Well, I, well, I think I better call it lin. Uh, so this lin is basically a, a kind of animal which is sacred. And Luai Gong is very surprised. And soon this news, uh, oh, okay. And then uh, he asked his soldiers to um, capture the unicorn. And this story is heard by um, Kongzi later. And well, at that time, Kongzi, uh, uh, Confucius was writing Chun Qiu. And well, as soon as he uh, mm, heard about the news about this unicorn, mm. uh, well, about this Lin, he uh, stopped writing the Chun Qiu, and he was very upset because it is traditionally said that um, uh, two, I mean, two different trends will happen when uh, when people see unicorn, uh, uh, when people see Lin. Okay, so the the first one is the country will bloom, uh, will uh, uh, the economic will go high or something like that and the second is that the country will end or will uh how to say that will be destroyed or something like that and apparently uh confucius think that uh, the uh, the country is going to an end so um he uh, which means that he dropped his pen uh, he dropped his brush pen uh, yeah, and stopped writing this mm. okay this is the piece Okay. This is a story. <laughs> okay, thank you. Let's hear.
That's it. Nice piece. Yes. Very interesting. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, I think it's the, this piece is one of the most interesting piece I've ever played. I mean, uh, for my uh, oh well, I remember that the last time I was in this New York Society meeting, uh, oh, I gave the other the recording of my playing the same piece. Well, because uh, well, well, because originally I think I might um, play a Chen Xiaoyan for this meeting for for this time, but I didn't pick it up, so <laughs> so I kind of uh, yeah re-record it <laughs> again. Okay. Mm. So last time I said something interesting about this piece, uh, and uh, well, at this time I think I might add uh, well, well, another thing about this piece. I uh, well, I discovered. Well, because uh, because originally, um, uh, well, I first learned this piece about um, eight or nine years ago or something, and uh, well, at that time, uh, well, I was not from, very familiar with the tablature uh, from the old tune books, uh, so um, <clears throat> so basically, I followed the recording of the Guan Bing Hu, and uh, later on, so after so after so many years, I mean, last year I. Well, I had a Qin student, and I was teaching her this piece, and I found out that I missed so many notes. Well, because the uh, the the original tablature had so many old fingerings, which is very interesting, and uh, almost the same thing like the Jiu Kuang and the Guang Ling San, uh, which is something like a Die Juan, uh, lots of um, technical parts. And uh, there are small, uh, uh, small techniques. Uh, so I think this is another proof that uh, this piece is a genuinely uh, a real piece. I mean, it, it's not like Shen Chang. I think Shen Chang does not have any old, old, old fingerings or something like that. So Shen Chang, so someone just doubted that Shen Chang might be, um, might be a fake old uh, Qin piece, Qin melody. So I think that the uh, Fortin Tao is uh, was a real chimality. So this is my uh, this is my another findings for yeah. Okay. Very interesting. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, can I say something about the uh, Shen Ren Chang? Shen Ren Chang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um. So Shen Ren Chang it appears in a uh, Xi Lu Tang Jin Tong, and then I've mm. actually like um playing some of the other pieces like Ying Zhou. And uh, the uh, uh, pieces the attributed to Ji Kang, so like the Changqing Duanqing, Changce Duanqe. Uh, like Changqing, you can. Uh, well, I mean, it seems to me that in the Xilu Tang Qin Pu, uh, a lot of the pieces, a lot of the fingerings in there, the editor of the Xilu Tang Qin Tong, he purposely um, simplified them down into like Mo and Go. Because like in the uh, Yingzhou, it's very obvious like some places that it should be uh, some kind of like Chen Fu or Die Jun, but he's just directly simplified it into Go 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 or like um yeah he he basically simplified it to two sets of Go and it just doesn't make sense at all in the piece there to play it. So I'm wondering if maybe like originally the tablature from wherever he copied uh, Shen Yinchang from, maybe it had like more interesting. This is, I mean, this is complete conjecture, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm trying to say maybe we shouldn't dismiss the antiquity of it right off yeah. the bat. Yeah, no. I agree. Just yes. because like it doesn't have fingerings in the Xilu Tang Jin Tong doesn't necessarily mean that there might not be more ancient roots to the music itself. Yeah, yeah, just like the Greek music <laughs> nowadays. Yeah. Right, like like Dejan can could write now as more one two and go one two, right? Yep, yep. So, it might be just different way to to write the notation. Okay. Okay. So. <laughs> That's it for Gun. Okay, yeah. Uh, should we 
move on to the next man, one. You're not gonna talk about the uh you're not gonna talk about the tour today. Tour. Tour. <laughs> okay, last time I was talking about this uh Guan Ping Hu's reconstruction reconstruction way, right? And I think that the uh, the piece of the Chen, uh, Guan Ming Hu's piece always have this kind of Beijing dialect, mm. um, which is kind of Tu. So that's what I think. <laughs> and also this, um, because I'm also from the Tianjin, Tianjin and Beijing, and near uh, similar places, uh, we uh, speak about the Northern dialect. So, um, when we, oh, I think the way when we play music, we always have this kind of a ragtime music tempo, right? Mm. So what do you think? <laughs> right, so well, I, I think yeah, right. I, that's, this is a very interesting point, right? Because you, you think that like Guan Ping Hu is like, a, um, he's like a, a typical Northern dialect style, right? And I was well, thinking, I, like with like Pingsha Luo Yan, right? We usually say that like the 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 Guangling Pingsha Luo Yan, we call that like the southern Pingsha, and then like the Guan Ping Hu's version, we call that like uh, the northern Pingsha. But then if you think about lineages, it doesn't really make sense because Guan Ping Hu is learned from like Yang Shibai, and like during the Ming Guo Shidai, they were all like saying like the north the north is like the Mian, and then the southern style is like the Yang Shibai. Right, it's like the uh, uh what is Yang Shibai's um, Jiu Yi. So then, how did that like get flipped on its head? Like, how did Yang Shibai, who's like the Dai Biao, who's like the representative of the Southern School, how did his student Guan Ping Hu come to represent the North? <laughs> is Guan Ping Hu because... actually from like Beijing? <laughs> well, because Guan Ping Hu might be the only. A Qin player who plays Qin that much, I think, at that time. Mm. <laughs> so, <Okay. laughs> so we don't have enough example. Yeah, because we don't know about Yang, how Yang Shibai plays. But uh, well, I do heard about a small story from Wu Zhao, and uh, this is about ten years ago. Wu Zhao tells me that, um, mm. okay. Uh, he knows the Yang Shibai's son, and the, the way Yang Shibai's son teach them how to do this, uh, how to um, mm, now, mm. well, is to counting the beans, the shu shu dou dou, right? So, well, just like this note, uh, so you have three, three beans, which means that uh, uh, you count the one, two, three. Mm. So that's very uh, rhythmic now. And uh, including Guan Ping Hu and Yue Ying, this kind of very rhythmic style is, is obvious. Well, in there, how the Qin dialect, I think. <clears throat> yeah. So well, you mean well, there now is more clear? Like one, two, three is one, two, three. There's no four. Yeah, exactly. And and the most obvious example is Yu Yu Ying's uh, her recording, and uh, because Yu Ying, uh, Yu, uh, Yu Ying is, I think, it's the most obvious one, and you can hear the 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 rhythm very clearly, and mm -hmm. all those now, well, well, it's just like a beat. It's just like beat one two three four one two three four. Mm. And and also it's some like, some, not... some Hu Mei Gong's pieces are uh, it's like the same. Yeah, they have a very obvious um, rhythm. Yeah, yeah, they have a very obvious rhythm. But then it's not like it's not like a straightforward kind of a rhythm like the Du Cheng uh, pieces. It's more of like a, there's like a, a syncopation to it. There's like a a very interesting kind of a syncopation. Right, and in well. Well, actually, I just thought of another interesting thing. It's in Tianjin dialect. Uh, the rhythm is called Ban Yan. And, and also in opera, uh, this is also called Ban Yan. Yu Ban Yu Yan, right? Yeah. Mm. Something like that. Mm. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's really obvious in like the Zhucheng pieces, like so, like and also like the man which descends from it. Like there, the bayan is like da 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 da. But like with Guan Pinghu, it's like da 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 da. Hmm. Yeah, and uh, to so speak about more. So that doesn't relate to Beijing dialect, the way they talk. The the northern dialect, I think, the northern dialect. Hmm. And also the the artistic trend. Uh, recently, I I recently I was reading a book. It's about French Baroque music, and uh, so so French Baroque music is very very different from other Baroque music, uh, including uh, including including Italians like England uh, or, or all the others. So the uh, so one of the most distinguished um, difference of the French. Baroque music is that is that their tempo is not uh, like a, a one beat by one beat uh, was very free free I mean and uh, they have this kind of uh, how to say that literati feelings in it well I cannot uh, well I cannot use my words to to describe that but uh, yeah uh, well I think he, he, you might understand that and uh, well, it's just like the the way how the Zhejiang and the Suzhou people plays the guqin. Mm. It's kind of um, their their beat, their rhythm is uh, seems to seems to be like not samba. It's just like another kind of uh, rhythm. <laughs> well, it's not northern rhythm. <laughs> what, 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 what. It's a it's a feeling, right? It's a feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah I can feel it. It's just like the how, I mean, the French people are. Uh, Artistic people, <laughs> so so I think they share the same share share something in common. We really need some people who speak these dialects because it's one thing for you to describe it and for us to hear that there is a difference, but um, it's right now it's mere description. <laughs> right, uh, and I have another uh, very interesting thing is that uh, 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 the way the way the cellist play Bach. Uh, it's like uh, 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 solo, how to say, solo, uh, cello, 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 So if you listen to those French cell cellists, <laughs> I mean, they're very free. Uh, they're not Northern dialect at all. <laughs> I mean, so that, that reminds me of the, how Zhejiang and Suzhou people play, play the Guqin music. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That is a parallel. <laughs> there are not that many French cellists, actually. Uh, right, Fournier. exactly. Yeah. Uh, but, but, but actually, Bach is from German, right? So the way the, the French people play the <laughs> Bach songs is very... I cannot... And you're also, I cannot... It's also a generation thing. In, mm, yeah. At least in Bach cello suites. Right. It might be the same th thing with Guan Pinghu. That is, when one artist dominates the period, that has an influence on on other players. And so, isn't that how a school is formed? Or like a pie? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, school. Not school. Do with geography at all, but. Um, yeah, I think Guan Ping Hu's, like, it's undeniable that, like, Guan Ping Hu's influence is much larger than Yang Shibai's Jiu Yi uh, in the modern era. Yeah. So, Yi Ning, what are you going to talk about today regarding uh, uh, Mei Yan? I mean, uh, Uh, I'm sorry. What was the question? <laughs> right, you what are you presenting? Talk about Mei An Pai and Zhu Chen Pai, right? Today. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Right. Um. So recently, I've been working on uh Da Pu, uh, this uh, handbook by Wang Wengquan. So I'll type that in the chat. Um, there's some speculation that he's a 
uh, ancestor of Wang Yanqing, who of course founded the uh, Mayan school. Uh, specifically, Wang Yanqing was said to have learned the Gu Qin from Wang Longchen, but uh, this probably didn't happen because when Wang Longchen passed away, Wang Yanqing was like uh, very, very young, like I think like six or eight or something like that. Um, so it's more likely that Wang Yanqing, and also if you look at the actual pieces uh, within their handbook, so Wang Longchen's handbook is called Uh, Qin Pu Zheng Li. Um, and looking at the pieces like his Ping Sha Lo Yan and Qin Pu Zheng Li is very, very different from Wang Yanqing's Ping Sha Lo Yan and, um, and uh, what's call it? Uh, Mian Qin Pu. Yeah. So looking at the connection between these two, I think it's more of like Wang Yanqing because he has this ancestor, Wang Longquan, who was very good at playing the Bu Qin. Uh, he kind of um, he wanted to like uh, or how do I say it? he was um, he wanted to learn of the style of Wang Longchen, but um, uh, th that doesn't necessarily like mean like uh, like or he admired the style of Wang Longchen, but it doesn't necessarily mean he actually directly learned from him. It's like you have a really famous or really um uh good awesome grandpa right and then like you, you hear about him and uh, you kind of like want to like ape his style uh, but going back so recently i've been on travels throughout uh shandong province and um specifically i've been to like uh Qingzhou. So right there here and there i climbed um like the uh yuma mountains and then i've talked to friends there um, eating the cuisine and all this, I think today, you know, because we've talked about, um, two different, uh, schools, we talked about the Sichuan school and we talked about the, uh, Guangpinghu, the Guan school and the Zhou school. And we're talking about how like regionalism and dialect and all of these things feeds into, uh, the formation of a style. Um, so today, what I wanted to say was, um, uh, I wanted to talk a little about a little bit about um the Qin Pu Zhongli because it's really really it feels very very Shandong <laughs> like um from what I've gotten uh traveling throughout Shandong and then uh then going back and then um playing the pieces in Qin Pu Zhongli there's a really there's a really direct connection um and the piece that and this feels the most emphasizes the most is um, Shan Ji Yun, because like I've learned the Guangling Shan Ji Yun, right? And I think maybe many of us are familiar with that. But then playing the Shan Ji Yun in Qin Pu Zhongli, it's it's such a Shandong piece. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. Like, if has anybody like met like people from Shandong? Like they eat like you know Da Tong, right? Big scallions, and then they like they they put that in like the and then like when they talk it's like very like ah, ah. the um, so Sheng are very different yes yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> eat a lot of garlic so, um, yeah right uh, uh, right and the cuisine is uh, it comes out in big plates um, and it's uh, a lot of meat right uh can't really quite describe it, um, but I'll put a link of my recording of Shan Ji Yun. I actually, I actually have a chin with me today, so I wanted to demonstrate a little, but um, maybe that won't be possible. So I'll, I'll, I'll talk about it the next Ya Ji. Um, I'll make a more uh, formal presentation of this. But the other thing I wanted to, uh, the actual piece that I'm playing today, that I'm sharing today is uh, slightly unrelated, but um, it's a piece composed by Xu Li Sun in 1963. Uh, this piece, he said that um, in, in total, Xu Li Sun has three compositions, uh, and all of these are based on his understanding of basically the man style. 
But of course, Xu Lisun himself is a person from uh, Nantong, right? So he's a southern person. Um, and he got this, like, he, he's, he's uh, getting a hold of this southern style. I mean, this northern style, this Shandong style from Wang Yanqing. And then he's reinterpreting that through his own um, southern lens. So it's, it's definitely a mix. And I feel like that's, uh, that is very much like what Mayan is. It's a fusion, right? Um, Wang Yanqing, because he's from Shandong, but then when he was teaching, uh, all of his students were, you know, he was teaching in Nanjing. And then so his students, many of them, if not most of them, were probably uh, Southerners. So we don't have any recordings of Wang Yanqing, but we have recordings of his students. So I think like, you know, we're, we're speculating about how like regionalism affects the formation of style. I think like the Mayan style, it must be uh, it must be a fusion of the northern and southern feel. You know, it, it's 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 a mix of the both. Um, and so, like when we see Shilisen describing the style of the Mayan school, he says that like the rhythm is very much from a kind of a northern rhythm. It's very banya, uh, right? Yi ba yi yet. But then with the uh, with the way that uh, you qiyin, so with the way that you attack the notes um, with the with your left hand, and also with the way uh, you round out the notes, that's kind of a more of a southern jinling style. And I think like with his with his compositions, Shilisun in total he had three compositions that he created in his life. One is called Tungongchu, uh, which is what I'll be sharing today. Um, the other is Yue uh, Shang Wutong, so the moon ascends above the Wutong tree, uh, which he uh, composed during uh, the Sino Japanese War, or World War II, basically. Um, and then the final one is Gong Shu Chun, but Gong Shu Chun doesn't really count. Gong Shu Chun means uh, spring arrives at the commune. But that one doesn't really count because it's uh, it's a reinterpretation of a piece he learned from Wang Yanqing, which is called uh, uh, Yang Liu Yuan. And uh, this Yang Liu Yuan is, it's actually a piece that Wang Yanqing used as a fan mian jiao cai, as like a, a bad, bad example of what Guqin music should not be, because it's a very, very, very flowery piece. And I've learned this piece as well, so maybe uh, I'll share it next time with everybody. But it's a it's a very it's a very funny piece. It it sounds like uh, it it sounds like uh, kind of like the northern joking kind of a talking sing songy style. Um, but anyways, apparently, like Wang Yanqing really didn't want Xi Li Sun to transmit this piece, but Wang Yanqing still a uh, Yang Liu Yuan. Yeah, in the chat, uh, Yang Liu Yuan, yeah. Um, and then he, but he still wanted to transmit this piece, albeit in a new form. So he basically just changed the name to, uh, and then slightly altered some of the rhythms and the uh, drifa uh, fingering. And then he renamed the piece to something more politically appropriate for the time. So Xi Li Sun, of course, he didn't, he didn't go to Taiwan after the, um, uh, well, uh, here in the Dalu, we call it the, uh, the what's we call it? The uh, liberation, right? He didn't, he didn't go to Taiwan after the liberation. Uh, he stayed uh, in Dalu. So um, afterwards, he, at least before Wen Ge, he always um, he actively participated in the Qin Tan. So in the in the Qin circles, right? And uh, so all three of these compositions he uh, were made in that political context of the time. Uh, but even within this, he still uh, we see from his writings to his friends that Chen Guangqiu, uh, which I'll play a bit later, he still considers one of his. Um, this is his own original composition. And in it, he, he's still striving for a kind of a classical beauty or like a traditional style. 
And the way he does that is he uses he uses the structure of Dao Yi, which I played last time. Um, no, uh, oh yes, okay, yeah, yeah, right. Uh, very funny piece. Um, okay, so this time, Chen uh, Guangqi. Uh, Xi Li Sun thinks it's a, one of his more successful compositions. Um, and it's uh, because he uses uh, the structure of Dao Yi, which I played last time. Uh, the, the song comes back over and over again to a uh, central uh, Fan Yin melody. Uh, and then the entire thing is very, very, uh, it's sing-songy, but it's not overly, they're, they're, it's still like kind of restrained. Um, and I guess I'll just say that much. We can just go ahead and watch the video and we'll talk more afterwards. So maybe Teo can play the video or, uh, or is it Andre? Andre will play the video. I'm here. Yes, I will, I will share your video. Just a second, okay. hold Thank on. Thank you very much. No, that's okay. My pleasure. The Billy Billy again, and so hold on one more second here. Oh, sorry, I forgot to share sound again. Okay.
Okay. <clears throat> Any questions? Very nice. Okay. Yes, very beautiful. Thank you for playing that, Andre. How do you decide on the tempo? Uh, yeah, I'll, so I should talk about it. So um, these are recent compositions, right? So like uh, uh, Xi Li Sun, he follows the Nian Qinpu style. Nian Qinpu is one of the, if not the first Qinpu with explicit markings for rhythm. And it does that. It's still like the normal tempo where it like goes from top to bottom, uh, right to left. But besides each pu uh, zhifa, besides each fingering uh, character, there's also like dots indicating rhythm. Um, and it's kind of kind of innovative in the, in the way it does that. Uh, so Xi Li Sun, for his pieces, uh, he also uh, follows this. He he also follows this uh, Mayan Chimpu style, where like he explicitly puts the rhythm dots next to each note, so it's very easy to figure out. Um, it's very easy to figure out uh, what the rhythm should be, um, and also he has a uh, genpu, so like solfeggio, uh, a, a notation in the following after each piece. Um, as for the tempo itself. Uh, I think I played, I, I'm probably playing it slower than Xu Li Sun would have played it, at mm. least listening to his um, recording. Xu Li Sun, listening to his recording, he feels like a very rushed person. <laughs> uh, he plays his pieces very quickly. Yeah. But um, for me, I feel like this is because this is like a more like a ballad kind of a piece, ballad I don't know how to describe it. Um, I, I slowed it down from what I think he would have played it at. Yes, you chose a very stately tempo. Moderate, yeah. <laughs> moderato. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think it suits because because I wanted to like portray like the the mellow uh, spring light, kind of like shining through the windows and like you know, kind of like waking you up. Um, so kind of similar emotions maybe to uh, like Yu Lou Chen Xiao, but except like slightly more happier and then more happier, not so much like a yuan kind of a setting. Mm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Yining. Uh, Thank you. Should, should we move on to the next performer? Uh, which is me. <laughs> you, hey. You yeah, your right. Mm. Yes. So I made a recording uh, this morning. And so I play the recording. Why I will do that? Because I'm, I'm, I was talking with Uni about composing and playing. Uh, there are totally different things when we are, or, I don't know, working with some material or new music song. We put our effort more in fine connection between ideas and playing fine paths for a melody, different fingerings. So, <laughs> much of my time was devoted to this compose, not to prepare the piece properly. And even so, I'm, I'm working on it. So, I will present... Um, how can I say a version, but not the final one? But I think it's, it's interesting to discuss something about composition. So I will play and we talk later after the piece. And just one second. Mm. I open the file. So are you sure my screen? here. Enjoy.
That's very beautiful. Very, very nice. Love it. <laughs> By the nice. way, um, what tuning is oh. this thing in? What? Well, sorry, <laughs> I put the volume in the, the maximum. And uh, sorry again. What tuning is this thing in? Uh, is it tuned? Uh, was it Titan Five Lucent One? Oh yeah, I'm using the tuning of Tahu Chia. That's what uh, I thought because. You were using the same modal motifs as Da Hu Jia, Nako. Like, you obviously yeah. pulled the basis from there. Yes, that's it. And primarily, I... Wow. I've been studying Da Hu Jia for a long, a long time, but for a while. And playing and playing again, playing again, reading, playing again. So, <laughs> I start thinking that I need uh, some rest. <laughs> 
of playing it, but so I start to play randomly at a harmonic section and so I found interesting in just go on and make this piece. But uh, in reality is something very trick to compose for chin, even for chin players, because well, it's not about to create a melody or, you know, sustain a melody in time, but to find the better path, I, I believe, the better fingering, fingering, sorry. Because it, it, it changes all. If you, I don't know, play on a fourth string, a five string, the same notes, the same movement, the difference is, is very huge. And so, I... I Improvise a lot of uh, harmonic colors, different ones, and try to understand the pitches and the balance between them. And so I got the, that the conclusion that I, <laughs> I'm trying to solve tensions in this music, like you have a, a same tone, tone. And I put here some of my previous experience on Western music, but medieval music, which I like a lot. And so we can find here a coda that came from French music, old French French music, the name it organum. It's very old. And so we have the a moment that I oh sorry. This kind of movement. We have a different pitches to to create a sense of cadence. And so, um, that's it, but I, I'm still working, working on, <laughs> this is my best after effort <laughs> today for dream music. <laughs> How useful is it that uh, you have played a lot of Da Hu Jia before and that became sort of uh, your practice or your uh, model for the mode? I... How can I say? I I think it is came from the atmosphere, but the, the division that we, we found in Tahutia between the first four strings and the next one. Like for example, I see uh, clearly in Tahutia we have a one, two, three, four or the basic set and then four, five, six, seven, another set. We can call that tetrachord, I don't know. But we have this this you know, a common chord, as a cent central chord, central tone. I'm not sure about but a central chord, like a, in my... A tuning can have two uh, tonal centers, and I think that's yeah. what you're identifying it as. Yeah, we have two tonal centers and cadences in Tahoe, too. Something like that, but... And so I start to wondering if I can use that, the low resonance in the first four strings and, and locate my melody in the ninth way as a center, but not a, in the tonal center, but a, a, also a special center, a visual center to me. And, you know, I, I do not go higher in this piece just two times and try to work in this, in this, this how can I say, this idea, locations in the soundboard. But I, I'm not used to calculate so much, you know, pitches and notes and relation and so forth. But I try to, you know, listen to and put my perception to work <laughs> without my thinking. But How about anyway. the harmonics? The harmonics I is was very intriguing because I'm trying to polarize the piece in the third string. But I can, I can't. I wasn't able to to create two tonal centers. The my first harmonic. Uh, let let me change my camera. Oh, oh, sorry. I need to put me in the spotlight. Mm -hmm. The first harmonic uh, chord I composed was that. short just that 
But the, uh, while I'm uh, working, playing the composition, I this, the whole piece goes to that. How to combine this with... We, we found that in, in Tahutia a lot, but more like this. And We, we see that in Tahutia. So this is the first section, then I change it. More intimate, intimate, how can I say? And I was able to make this, this puzzle, <laughs> harmonic puzzle, or the puzzle, like a snake. So this was a tonal center, and then tension, another tonal center. I work with this too, and try to balance with a, a harmonic coda in the beginning, but the last one uh, wasn't good, isn't good, <laughs> and it's recomposing thinking. Hearing you describe the process um, helps us to understand the music better. I I think just one word, like um, how can I say, like a walk, well, like a walk. No, it's it's as if we have to learn the piece too. You see? <laughs> yes, that that that's the problem. <laughs> when I compose, I just play. But you know, not so good. Just play. How can I say? I I I, I didn't. I, I don't found the word. But I just play uh, without any you know sense of performing. Uh, but I found something different. So I'm playing. I improvise, and I uh, improvising. I found something. So that's the the something very interesting. Suddenly. An idea, or just a, I don't know, a melody stick in my mind, and go in, stay there <laughs> for a day, for two days, and wow, <laughs> I need to uh, work on that, or just forget. But I, I, I chose to, you know, for example, let me show are you, you coming along and recording the piece in terms of writing it? In terms of writing, what I what <laughs> writing the score so that you remember it and for reproducibility for others. I do. I did that. I write it, but in the next day, wow, so awful, and I do it again, do it again, and so I remember uh, a phrase, a quotation for Villa Lobos, a, West, a Brazilian composer, that that someone you know asking him, uh, Maestro. Uh, it has a lot of wrong notes in this music. You you, you need to rewrite. And from, in the time of rewriting, I compose another one. <laughs> so he, his thinking is very Brazilian, you know, a, a little bit lazy. But you know, I need to choose the better opportunity to play chain. So I put my efforts in composing and make drafts. But I. I in, in fact, when I finish, I will write it down, yes, of course, in a tablature. And so, maybe, <laughs> someone can play. I find that I'm becoming more and more of a technically based pedant in terms of composition and recording. Uh, I look for, so much like uh, as I did for my student Brian in his uh, composition. I insisted wow. that he have a good accountability in his mm -hmm. in that he writes, you know, like a full and not miss out on stuff and go lazy and miss out important content or uh, skip out on Jianzipu to a degree where it becomes unacceptable to a Qin player or uh, to uh, be clear and don't write something like, oh, uh, muck, around, muck along these strings in this section here. So uh, very technical, very precise kind of writing uh, I insist on. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, 
from your experience of uh, composing, I think uh, you're also learning a very traditional method of understanding the Qin music in that you're using whatever pieces you have learned in a certain mode as the study, as, you know, uh, what Wang Geng, was it Wang Geng? Or was it someone else? Oh, crap, I uh, forgot. Uh, <laughs> composer guy. Uh, about yeah. modally based uh, learning for Qin. You know, yeah, all modally. the practice and the study about the yin stuff, the preludes, and using yeah. those as building blocks for other uh, uh, pieces. That's it wasn't right. Wang Geng. Now I forgot what his, what his name. I'm not sure. Hmm. But uh, anyway, Yong Shibai. Yeah. I was talking about Yong Shibai. Oh. Uh, no, yeah. I, I, he's a New York Shin Society member. The one who kept on talking about uh, modal, uh, mo sorry, uh, modal preludes. Oh yeah, yeah, but in, in oh yeah, in, in, I don't know, two years it's ago. It's been, been, been it's been, yeah, Leaping. yeah, yeah, leaping, yeah, it's him, yeah, kind kind of that we 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 saw that in the handbook. So the short prelude has a kind of basic structure to working on, and yes, you were right. When we are uh, achieve more pieces performing pieces we can use some blocks to make some kind of i don't know portrait about chin music but eventually it helps we... to remind us occasionally that there is this technical side yeah. to understanding that yeah yes that's it or the convention about cadence ending notes and something like that yes yes i think it's very traditional in my mind but i'm not sure i think it is <laughs> I think I'm becoming more and more like Cherny. <laughs> Maybe. Perhaps. <laughs> Thank you, Andre. That's so Thank cool. you. Thank you. Thank you. So the next um, one. Yeah. Oh, yes, uni. <laughs> right. Cool. Okay. Great. Okay, so uh, hello everyone. Uh today I'm going to be presenting something a little different. So uh, many of you will have known that uh, in the in last August, I presented a paper on the feasibility of a nine-string chin being played today. And uh, the, one of the reasons uh, why I wanted this is to... Uh, you see how when we compose or when we uh, try to adopt a piece of so, uh, tang or song or medieval Chinese music, we always have to use external tunings in order to uh, make the shin play more than just the five sounds, more than pentatonism. So uh, I go like, instead of having to skip over certain sounds and make things uh, so difficult for us, why don't we just have all the seven uh, tones of heptatonism available to us in the first place? So I wrote that paper and now I'm starting to catch up by actually having an instrument and uh, starting to do some dapu of uh, heptatonic pieces from various different sources and see how that fares. So uh, this is my first example of uh, Tang Dynasty music uh, adapted to a heptatonic chin. So here we go, enjoy.
Now I'm gonna play the same thing again in a different tuning. Right. So, uh, because this piece uh, does have the ambivalence of having multiple scores uh, uh, record this piece, and we don't know, uh, some people say, or some scores, wrote that it was in Yue Diao, while other ones uh, said it was written in Sha Tuo Diao. So Keith Wong of Vancouver made uh, both versions out. And the uh, important part when I dapu this piece is that I need to basically have the uh, fingerings exactly the same, but yet utilize the power of the tuning itself from the heptatonic tuning so that when I play it, the uh, differences from each mode when, it, when it's changed is reflected despite using the same uh, way of playing it. So... Uh, I think that's a very strong primer on the nature of how Tong music is inter moodily interchangeable, and that needs to be reflected in the da the Gu Xin Da Pu that I do. So that's the uh, bits of work that I've been doing so far, and hopefully I have a chance to uh, talk more about this in an academic conference, but uh, that would be the first exemplar piece of uh, these haptotonic tunings that I wanted to do. Next piece, I'm probably going to be um, uh, doing something different. Uh, so maybe a Western piece of music or something. Question time. So you got these nine strings. So how about this, uh, the, the number uh, seven, eight, uh, uh, nine, this string looks like a very similar. Is it special made? Or Oh, it's specially made. And um, I don't know about if you guys uh, know about the differences between a four-string pipa and a five-string pipa, but um, the gogen, the wuxian, is considered a completely different instrument compared with the four-string pipa. And um, to this end, 
I think that the nine string should be considered quite a different instrument. Uh, you can see that despite a lot of practice, I was still struggling to find the different positions on the instruments. Because as you know, uh, after training for a long time on the seven string, you're used to the fact that string four is your middle and seventh string is your end, closest one to you. But on the other hand, I keep on reading the score and whenever I go uh, see string four and I hit the middle string, that's not right because string five is the middle. And whenever I see string seven, that's finding a needle in a haystack because uh, there are nine strings and seventh string is the third one from the last. And that is perhaps some of the hardest place you can find on in a stack of strings. So there's a lot of relearning. Very interesting, sex. So that thing seems made very quick. I remember the older- It took a year. It still took a year. Mm, I see. So I've been planning for this before even I went to London to make the uh, talk about on the paper. So I started early. Who, who, who made the change? Can you tell us? Mm, I forgot. Some maker in Yangzhou, and uh, actually it's uh, done through the... Uh, it's done through the agent of uh, Alan Yip, so okay. it's a fine Gu Chen. Mm. Uh, Yuni, how do you turn tune this turning? About the turning that you made in this chain, you you turn it by hearing using digital. Turning I am glad you asked. So notice how I have these slides uh, on the uh, video. I have made a pretty a uh, detailed explanation of this in the talk back in uh, August, as well as, uh, well, here. Again, this is a heptatonic tuning, so it's a completely different beast from pentatonic tunings that we know in the Gu Qin world. As I just explained here, standard tuning is based on the Gong tuning, or the Lydian mode, at the uh, bottom seven strings of the nine string instruments. So it becomes uh, la si do re mi sharp fa so la si, and I you can hear that when uh, you play the second here. Right, and whenever you switch to another external tuning, you uh, start going uh, by you know. Uh, loosening or tightening other strings according to the uh, cycle of fifths. And um, you know how we start by tightening the fifth string and loosening the third string for uh, pentatonic instruments. But when you do so, uh, when you loosen strings, you're adding sharps. And when you're uh, tightening strings, you're adding flats. But here, uh, because this is a heptatonic system, uh, when you're tightening a string, you're adding sharps. When you're loosening strings, you're uh, adding flats. So it goes more in line with what we understand in w uh, Western parlance because this is native to Western musical systems. So it actually becomes easier to explain in the heptatonic system. And likewise in the Sha Tuo Diao system here, uh, I basically added uh, in the previous one, the Yue Diao, I, I just tightened uh, string three from standard tuning. And here it's Titan 3, 7, and then 4. So I added more and then the tonal center uh, switched again, which you can see on this table here. But um, any given tuning, uh, any chin tuning, actually is expressed in several different modes, which you can see on the side here. So by saying that this is a Sha Tuo Diao, I'm not just implying that you have to tighten 3, 7, 4, but that the Gong is actually on string 1 and string 8. If it was in Da Shi Diao or something like that, it would actually be the same tuning, but then the um, Gong string or the modal center is actually on string two and nine. So the Yan Yu Er Shi Ba Diao, the 28 modes of uh, banquet music, is more specific and more precise than Gu Qin uh, modal names or tuning names, because they refer to not just the tuning, but also which string is gong. 
So it has a lot more nuance in this system and is a lot more precise, which I've come to appreciate. Uh, there is actually some mention of this system in the uh, Gu Qin discipline, and that is only in one handbook, and that is in the uh, Wu Xue San Fang Qin Pu in the Late Qing by a Guangzhou-based uh, Qin player. However, that system is not that well known and uh, never became mainstream. You need, but uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, regarding the 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 practice 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 turning practice, I mean, you use harmonic to turning. Oh, that's it's the, completely uh, technically based. It's not by ear. It's not by external tuner, and that's the strength of the system. Because I wanted I to use the same Guqin tuning theories as we have always done uh, on this new system to you know gain credibility yes for sure temperament is a different issue though yeah thank you for that this is a i i recognize that it's not it's no temper of turning not temper because turning. Well, i'm using yeah. chin temperaments you see i'm using chin's expectations and chin standards that when we are uh tuning your usual thirds and quarters that is your san fan sun yi based uh temperaments but of course, adjusted for anything that you know is out of place. It's not twelve tone equal temperament or anything. Otherwise, our harmonics wouldn't work. But uh, I'm saying that chin tuning or chin temperament can be applied outside of pentatonism in the same method because it is a system in itself. And I wanted to use this as an, also an example or as an exemplar on how to teach uh, what is temperament and what is modality. See, thank you. You said that a hundred times. <laughs> now I understand. I think people aren't getting the um, uh, what I said back in August in the talk because I didn't have the chin and I didn't have actual musical examples. But as I produce more, people will come to understand what I'm getting at. Anyone else? Are people nice. starting to? Catch on to what I'm trying to say last year. It's a little bit difficult for most of the people who are not the expert. <laughs> but I think composers will like the fact that you have, you know, all the white keys of the uh, piano available, mm -hmm. and you don't need to uh, switch strings around in order to, you know, cover a certain note that isn't pentatonic. It's easier that way. I've yeah. heard that like this is um because like we know with the tuning of the se, uh the qin and the se, right? Uh the se it has a, a line of it has a line of strings that are tuned pentatonically, so that when you glissando, uh it still sounds nice. But then like a third of the strings they're like tuned weirdly, and that's for the pentatonic notes. And I've heard that that's basically what you said um, that it's for the sake of um, filling out the heptatonic scales. Uh, I don't know. It's basically any, what's uh, um, the Cantonese saying you have 10 pots but only nine lids. You have to switch around in order to cover all your bases. That's what the pentatonic system was doing. Using a pentatonic tuning to emulate. Heptatonism is difficult because you have to uh, emulate the non-standard or the non-pentatonic sounds with, you know, things like press strings and other stuff, or even switching around your modal bass so that you get the uh, non-pentatonic tone. You see this a lot in uh, traditional Japanese uh, zheng or sō no koto. Uh, pieces as well. They do that because they tune their instruments largely uh, pentatonically, but they're playing uh, medieval Chinese music, which uses a lot of fours and sevens. So this is the easier one because this is one of those examples. But when you have a uh, instrument that is natively heptatonically tuned, you don't need to uh, search around for different places. You have a string dedicated for that. And you can with that, you like, can play in whatever timbre you want. 
And like historically, there were like nine strings, and I think like even like twelve string tunes, right? But they were not tuned heptatonically, and because of that, in the Song Dynasty, in the Zhu Dao period, uh, basically the idea was scrapped because they thought that nine strings was superfluous. Well, they're right. If it was for a pentatonic system, however, nine strings is the minimum amount of strings that you need to feasibly run a heptatonic tuning system, which is closer to something more like a Sumerian lyre. However, if you want to tune、uh, a complete heptatonic cycle、uh, from the beginning back to the end, proving itself、uh, in a full circle without any gaps, you actually need a ten-stringed instrument, not nine. Uh, I think I've, I think I've seen in like the writings of, oh shoot, who's the guy who invented um, twelve tone equal temperament in China? Zhu Zaiyu. Zhu Zaiyu, right? Uh, in in one of his books, he had like a drawing of a seven string and a nine string chin, and they were tuned heptatonically. Like because he used the、uh, lulu, and、um, you're yeah, messing and two you ideas. Like,、uh, first of all, his chins are always pentatonically tuned. However, there is a separate instrument called a lujun, which looks like a sert without any bridges, and it was tuned、uh, actually chromatically. It was used to represent or calculate and then present all the twelve、uh, semitones, all the twelve lu of one octave. So that one is even bigger. So, so、uh, you see, perfect fifths that I have, or on the chin, perfect fifths are four strings apart. On my instrument, it's five strings apart. On the lujun, that would be eight because there are eight semitones in the perfect fifth, right? Eight strings apart. But if you want to、uh, tune、well, like a chin. Um, Did anyone actually use like the lujun for performing, or was、no. it purely like a skill? No, it only、yeah. has one octave without、uh, any repeats. So another、uh, significant trait about the chin is that because it does not have all twelve notes of the、uh, octave,、uh, they actually have to repeat a little more. You know, like repeat your C and D on your seventh string in order to go back on the arc that you have. Uh, and that creates that little bit of extra octave.、Um, actually, helps in your performance. You know, having a ability to shift up and down the、uh, your stand your register. But if you have a lujun that only works strictly within one octave, it's actually not enough. So if you want to play it like a chin, you'll need to add more strings. But how many more strings do you add? That becomes a technical question. That 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 went over my head a bit. Are you talking about um? Are you talking about how like the seventh string E doesn't return a perfect octave?、So mm, then, like, string, no, it's not、way. that. When you select、oh. a pentatonism, uh, you're basically choosing five tones out of twelve, right? The full right. cycle of fifths in order to get all your twelve tones is a full circle. When you pick out.、Mm-hmm. Five tones, you know, pentatonic pieces. In order to play,、mm-hmm. you're selecting five tones out of the twelve, a slice of the pie.、Mm-hmm. But in order to tune your chin to go back to the original tone,、uh, what we do on the chin, you know, how after the unmatching pair of、uh, five and three in set B, you know, tenth、uh, and ninth way, you flip around, right? To avoid the unmatching pair, you basically go from,、uh, you know, for example, you tune a. Uh, set A string one to four, and then four to six, and then、uh, six to three, but then three you can't tune five, right? So you go back to、yeah. three and one. In、yeah. order to do that, basically what you're doing is going down the fan and then going back the same way you came. Ah,、uh, ah,、uh, yeah, yeah. On yeah. a seven、yeah. uh, or heptatonic uh, system, which is a larger slice of the pie, you're doing the same thing, but it's a longer way around and back. That's why you need ten strings in order to, to do so, because you need a Wider turn, but what happens when you have a lujun that goes all the way full circle is that you don't need to do this turning around thing because you're already going full circle. 
So the question becomes on a Lujan, how many notes do you need to backtrack on in, in order to get back uh, to the original tone? And I tell you that uh, the question is stupid because you don't need to. That's why the Lujan can survive with only 13 strings. Uh, that being the 12 tones of the uh, octave plus the perfect octave. Did the Lujan also have uh, Hui? Uh, or was it literally just the so? Yes, they the do, difference? but it's not really that useful. Because uh, at least in Juza use uh, version, the uh, the harmonics are Sanfen Sun Yi bass, right? And he uh, does away with that. So there's no point in putting a Hui anyway. Oh, I see, I see, I see. As you can see, um, I've sort of burnt my uh, brain in the, over the past five or six years, and I, it's starting to come to fruition. So that's what I'm, I've been researching on. And hopefully I'll be able to uh, present to you more uh, capabilities and functions of this new instrument. Thank you very much. Thank you. Wonderful. Well, Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> I think I start to understand more about your idea. Yeah. Well, well, we hope to see more next time. Thank you. So finally, we're going to see Luca. Yeah, Luca Pisano. Hello, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, okay. So, yeah. And the next and the last of the day. Uh, so I move to my uh, chin table. I will play uh, Wise Now by Sue. Of course, it's a, a chin piece that is quite famous, so I don't think I need to introduce the, this, this piece. Uh, I will play uh, the, um, the version of the Sanchinipu uh, in the transcription made by, uh, mainly uh, based on the Societai transcription. So just a second and I move to the other table.
Bravo! <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> I move back to my <laughs> to the other side of the desk. <clears throat> That's very nice. Can you tell us uh, how did you learn or did you dab or you learn from? Uh, actually, uh, the, I start learning by uh, when I had some double classes with the uh, master society. And uh, actually, uh, I started myself double. And uh, at the end, of it, I discovered that my version was not actually so different than uh master soul so actually the the rhythmic structure was uh, something uh, somewhat different so uh, i mm, i decided to play uh, his own uh, uh version uh, on the rhythmic uh, style but uh, actually the other part is uh, mainly uh, i did it mainly by by, by myself uh, and uh, yes it was quite i think it's uh, already eight and nine years ago so it's quite uh, uh, long ago but uh, yes it was uh, uh, in the beginning of my classes trying to understand um, uh, to work on uh, that mm -mm -mm. very nice so mm -hmm. when you dabu did you listen other masters playing first actually uh, when i started uh, uh he didn't didn't want to to play to me so i said you try to play yourself and then uh, uh, we check together uh the way you play and my way so of course at that time i was already i know that there were many recording available but i tried to do it myself and then uh, we just compare uh, our own uh, uh, versions and uh, differences and then uh, uh, in the end, I just uh, learned his own, but uh, I, I mean, uh, it was uh, very, it was very similar. So, but the problem is that now I don't have time for Dabu actually, <laughs> because I like to, but uh, I actually try to make a Dabu for a, a very short piece that is inside the Sultan uh, Shintong. Well, it's uh, uh, available only in this manual. And uh, I can try next time if uh, to play it in any case, and uh, you see <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> sure, sure. Mm -mm -mm. Which piece? But it's my only tentative <laughs> because I really uh, I don't have time to do it more. It's a very short piece. Mm -mm -mm -mm. From from Silu Tan right? Did you say yeah, that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -mm -mm. What's the name? Uh, the name. Uh, I don't remember. It's the one before the uh, Liu Xuan Cao. Uh, it's the, the it's a short uh, piece uh, regarding the um, the story of Liu Xuan Cao. Also, it's uh, an introduction an, an introduction uh, to Liu Xuan Cao. Mm, I don't remember. I don't have it here. But uh, mm -mm. anyway. Okay, I will look it up. You mean okay, the after okay. after Liu Xuan Cao, right? Yes, also because Solution Sound is also a, play, uh, a piece that uh, uh, I rarely heard playing. Uh, so my idea was to learn this short piece and then uh, try to dub Solution Sound. But Solution Sound is very long and uh, mm -hmm. I have to, it really needs a, a lot of time <laughs> that I don't mm -hmm. have so far. Mm -hmm. So I start only from the short, uh, short one and then I will see if uh, in a later time I can do it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Um, is it Duo Feng Yin? Yes, yes, Duo Feng Yin, yes, Duo Feng Yin, yes, Duo Feng Yin, yes. It's uh, okay. uh, about the bee uh, uh, going the collar of the concubine uh, of the bochi. It's, uh, it's a story also that you can find in the Qin Shi, uh, uh, but uh, there's not there's not this uh, piece title. There's only the story. Uh, that, uh, that is related with uh, uh, Lu Xuan Cao. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And uh, so I can try next time to 
to take it back because it's an, an hour it's quite a long time and not playing uh, the, the, my my uh, my dapu so I, I can do it actually after hearing uh, Andre playing his own composition I was uh, thinking about to play uh, uh, tune uh, in the same tuning uh, long short also it's a piece that I like a lot uh, from the from the Shenzi Mipu but uh, I will see next time <laughs> Wonderful. Do you know how long it will, how long it will take you to dab with this piece? Oh, oh boy! This, no, this this short one. Uh, uh, I think uh, uh, three months, more or less. Mm -mm. Three months. But uh, I remember that uh, I I sent a recording to Master So and. Uh, he was not impressed, actually. So uh, I I will play for you and await your feedback. <laughs> <laughs> the feedback doesn't come to you. <laughs> so, Just see. silence. <laughs> so so I, I hope it's not that bad. So <laughs> let's see. Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's very nice. Um, right now it's twelve, almost twelve thirty here. To to, we've been like almost four hours. Yeah? No, three hours half. Right. Yeah. Uh, and, look, and look at don't be afraid it usually is not so long as today <laughs> no problem <laughs> just no, no, because it's, of it's special fine, because it's sunday sunday afternoon so this sunday um i don't have any uh, kind of uh uh things to do appointment uh, something no 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 so i'm, I'm free absolutely, absolutely so. okay that's that's good <laughs> thank you <Yeah. laughs> Okay, so I think we can finish our Yaji today here. And thank you everyone for staying so long to the end. And so then thanks for every performance. Although the uh, Master Yuan two and uh, the Yuan Xi Lao are left. So um that's it. Everybody, Happy New Year, and we will see you until next time, two months later. Happy New Year. Don't see fat. Happy New Year, everyone.